Hi, Roger McGull is here at Velocity New York 2018. I'm here with Chris Nova, the Senior Developer Advocate at Heptio. Welcome, Chris. Hi, nice to meet you. So what does a cloud-native infrastructure mean to you? Cloud-native infrastructure? Uh, well, I think the first thing that comes to mind is my book, uh, Cloud <laughs> Infrastructure. I can uh, see that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I don't know. It's, it's kind of tricky to, to define. Um, I, I think if you look at the patterns behind cloud-native application development um, and apply a lot of those lessons and those lot of, a lot of those philosophies to managing and mutating infrastructure in your, uh, your stack, I think that's where cloud-native infrastructure starts to come to life and really sing is uh, you know, t taking these ideas and, and writing software to manage our infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing it also means something about cloud first. It's like that's the implied assumption and that means you get the easy procurement, the easy scaling. And totally. So uh, you know, a lot of these patterns wouldn't exist if we didn't have the cloud where we could just you know, send an HTTPS request up to somewhere and there's this magical pool of resources that appears to be never ending and you just get free compute or, you know, relatively free for the engineer, but somebody's going to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. So, you mentioned something about a declarative infrastructure. I'm curious what you mean. Um, so, yeah, the word declarative is like an interesting word, um, especially in Kubernetes, which is where a lot of the, the cloud native topics come from. Um, to me, when I, when I say declarative, it just sort of, it means this idea of defining some abstraction, some state, and uh, you know, saving that in the API server in Kubernetes, and then you'll have this controller or operator that reads and reconciles that state. Um, and again, applying that to infrastructure. You know, how, do, how do we scale our cluster? What does our load balancer look like? What do our firewalls uh, look like? And um, you know, having a controller to enforce that over time. Mm -hmm. So what is the Kubernetes cluster API? Oh, this is such a great question. Uh, so the Kubernetes cluster API is a great example of a bad name. Um, <laughs> it's really like a cluster framework that has an API, and there's a lot of tooling in place to help uh, engineers build their own implementation for this API. Uh, the, the TLDR of it is um, about a year and a half ago, myself, um, a couple of the other infrastructure engineers in Kubernetes upstream, uh, a handful of folks from Google, Robert Bailey, um, is one of the other organizers of the group now. Uh, we kind of got together and said, you know, we're tired of the fragmented infrastructure space in Kubernetes. Everybody has a different way of doing something and a different way of representing something. We would like to bring the community together. So we started working on a standardized API for in infrastructure, and then we started to write tooling to make it easy for various cloud providers to have an implementation. Right now, Google has one. Uh, myself and a handful of folks at Heptio are working on uh, in the AWS implementation, there's one for DigitalOcean. I think VMware has been working on one. Um, so it's just finally the community coming together and agreeing on how to represent our infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Is this like REST-based? Is it? What? Um, I mean, it's it's using a Kubernetes CRD. Um, well, it should be. I'm not sure if that pull request got merged. It, the long-term goal is for it to be a Kubernetes CRD. Um, which basically is just a way of representing uh, an arbitrary object in the Kubernetes data store. Um, and th so there's not really different endpoints you would call. You would use the Kub Kubernetes tooling as it stands to interact with that object. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're seeing on our Safari platform, we see a lot of people getting more and more interested in Kubernetes. Do you think Kubernetes is ready for the enterprise? Absolutely. Um, my talk tomorrow at 2 p.m. is called Moving an Enterprise Application to Kubernetes. Um, I think you know one of the big questions I bring up in the talk is it's not if Kubernetes is ready for the enterprise, is if it's if your enterprise application is ready for Kubernetes, and if you're going to find value and benefit from a from a move to Kubernetes. We're finding the trend is that most folks have a lot to gain from moving to Kubernetes. We just want to remind folks that it does come at sort of a bit of an investment. There's a cost associated with that. We just want to demonstrate that the value outweighs that cost. Mm -hmm. yeah. And is the cost mostly like resource time? Is it? I mean, it's a lot. Kubernetes is, you're introducing complexity at first, and then that complexity stabilizes and it actually reduces complexity for your team moving forward. Um, so I think the cost is everything from engineer hours to just general learning curve to uh, rethinking about how we're building and developing and um, running our applications. So how long do you think it takes for someone to become Kubernetes native? To become Kubernetes native? Um, so I think, I, f I feel cheesy saying this, but I feel like it's a lifetime of learning. Like, uh, I look at myself and, you know, being a Linux user, I'm a, I'm a full-time Linux user whenever I develop. 
Um, I, I don't think I am or will ever be complete on that journey. I think it's a lifetime of learning. I feel like you know, within a couple of months, you learn the basics of Kubernetes, and then you spend uh, you know, the rest of your career learning more as the tooling progresses and as your you know, specific journey progresses. I would say, just as someone who's worked with a lot of engineers, that's exactly the kind of attitude that makes someone a great engineer. Oh, thanks. So that is always something else to learn about something. Yeah, like I do, uh, uh, you know, we do a weekly webinar at Heptio uh, called TGIK, and every week we're able to come up with a handful of things that have changed since the previous week in Cloud Native. So, you know, it's out there if you look for it. You just gotta, you know, be, you have to know where to look and you know, be ready mm -hmm. for it. And how would you say the, the maturity is at this point? Of Kubernetes. Yeah, but in, in terms of, you mentioned that there's a lot of changes and in the kind of modern era of, there's a lot of releases and, and uh, constant updating. Um, in terms of that like kind of curve of, of change, how do you think? Um, well, I, th I think you know, we've been at a point where you can run a basic application in Kubernetes well um, for quite some time now. A lot of the changes we're seeing today is making very like niche improvements that are specific to very specific use cases, you, tuning the network, like getting mm -hmm. it ready for scale, things like that. Um, so I think it's I think it's there and it's ready already. I think you know as as you go on the cloud native journey, you're gonna you're gonna learn more about specific things that are important to you. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time today. Sure.